Number 31. How are the Bohr model and the quantum mechanical model of the hydrogen atom similar, and how are they different? Pretty straightforward. So the similarities for both are that they're both models of hydrogen, right? The difference is, is that one is the scientist Bohr and the other one is the quantum mechanical model. So different names means differences. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you guys all in the next video. And if you want, click the sub- I'm kidding. <laughs> I <laughs> Gotcha. Did I get you? <laughs> all right, so. Let's get into the real similarities and the real differences between the Bohr model and the quantum, I'm just going to put QMM, quantum mechanical model. So if I can, I will draw the nucleus with the electrons. Now, we should be very, very familiar with how a Bohr model looks, right? It's the nucleus, which is basically circular with its surrounding electron shells, right? And there could be one electron shell, there could be two electron shells in which the element, um, in which the electrons are located, right? Now I'm going to draw the nucleus for both models exactly the same because that's one of the similarities. So the similarities for both the Bohr model and the quantum mechanical model is that there is a central nucleus in which, so I'll put nucleus, nucleus, in which protons and neutrons are located in. So in the Bohr model, we have protons and neutrons, which have zero charge. Protons are positive. And in the quantum mechanical model, both protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Also, they both realize that the nucleus is where majority of the mass comes from. So for both of these, majority of the mass, I'll just put majority, majority. So in both models, the majority of the mass comes from the nucleus, all right? So the nucleus is very mass heavy because that's where most of the protons, well, all the protons, right, are located. And they also agreed that the electrons are outside of the nucleus. So those are your similarities thus far. Now let's start to deviate. So the Bohr model says that, well, if this was n equals one and this was n equals two, the electron, basically, let's just focus on an electron in n equals 2. The electron will move basically around the orbit, basically like how the planets revolve around the sun. So basically, the electron will move around in its orbit in the very discrete, you know, n equals 2, and also... Remember, these electrons also, the Bohr model said that the electrons can jump as well from n equals 2 to n equals 1 and vice versa. But the problem arises when you're talking specifically of that revolving around the shell or in the shell. The electrons are revolving around. The quantum mechanical model doesn't make that clear cut. It basically takes that idea of a shell and kind of expands on it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead draw a line like this. The quantum mechanical is basically talks about a area around the nucleus, and that would be classified as n equals one. It's not a clear cut, you know, um, circular revolving around the nucleus. It's basically a whole area in which an electron would be probably in the shell. So maybe an electron is here, or an electron is here, or maybe an electron is here. So if we had to draw n equals 2, there would be a whole range of area around the n equals 1, which would be equal n equals 2. So this would be n equals 2. And once again, the probability maybe could be the electron would be here, or maybe the electron could be here. Another difference is, is that the Bohr model is two-dimensional, 2D. The quantum mechanical model actually takes into, you know, the probability aspect of a electron actually being found here, specifically here, in this position, so it's a 3D representation. So with the 2D representation, 
Bohr only had an n value. In the 3D quantum mechanical model, there's actually three numbers that we are going to love and get to know as these questions progress, which is the n. So it expands on the Bohr model's idea of the quantum number n. There's an l number, and then there's an ml number. So all three of these give three-dimensional, oh gosh, all three of these give three-dimensional aspects of an electron found in the shell. And it's all about based off of probability. So one other thing is that basically an electron here can be turned into a wave aspect. And they talk about it as far as a wave form, which is kind of this like little um, variable like this. You'll see this in your textbook. So that's also adding to the fact that it's a 3D model. It can exist as a wave and as a particle. The Bohr model, electrons are only exist as particles. In the quantum mechanical model, electrons exist as particles and waves. So it's just like expanding on the Bohr model. All right. So those are all the similarities and differences. The similarities, once again, is the nucleus is po positive and it has protons and neutrons. And that's where the mass, majority of the mass is. But the difference is, is that whole idea of the electrons outside of the nucleus. One is talking about revolving, right? which is the Bohr model. The other one puts probability on a electron's exact location, and it's a 3D model. So we need to have the N, the L, and the ML uh, quantum numbers, they call them. But we will get to all of these in the next couple of questions. I'm sure there's going to be tons of them, so let's get to it. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Click the subscribe button if you want to subscribe to the channel. That would help us out a lot. Get the word out to all the other people that are using the OpenStax text. And I thank you for that. Thank you for the support. Thank you for coming here. I hope we're helping you. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.